Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here at Trumpel Reads, and in this video we're going to be doing a very quick TBR video for the month of August. Now, half the books that I've selected for um, this TBR are for the Mythathon, which is hosted by Jesse over at uh, Bowties in Books. I encourage you guys to go check out that readathon. That sounds like something you're interested in. And those five books, I'm just going to go over real quick since I already, you know, did a video over the TBR for that readathon. So I'll probably put that in a what's that called a card or whatever up in the corner I encourage you guys to check it out if you want to look into these books a little bit further but yeah let's just get started uh with those five books all right first up is raven cry by ed mcdonald very very bleak gray grim dark slash steampunk um just really really good like kind of like heroic uh fantasy there's some like i said steampunk elements because there are uh, like for example one of the main weapons of the defense of this kingdom is known as Null's Engine, which is this giant laser cannon type thing, I guess, that's powered by magic. So it's kind of like a mix of steampunk and magic. It's kind of really cool. Um, I just really love the main character, Gal Harrow. Uh, just his perspective just reminds me quite a bit of sort of the way Croker uh, narrates the Chronicles of the Black, excuse me, the Black Company. So I encourage you guys to check that out if you really like morally gray, bleak fantasy. <laughs> All right, next up is Four Fish, The Future of the Last Wild Food by Paul Greenberg. Um, I just really enjoy sort of cultural histories, that sort of thing. And this is obviously is kind of like a history anthropology study of these four fish, which are salmon, cod, tuna, and bass, and how they have sustained uh, human populations over time. And obviously, I think this book is going to deal with how they're either being over-exploited or how they're being used sort of um what managed but respectfully or economically feasibly i guess um and not over exploiting them i suppose um because i think one of the big selling points that i read on one of the blurbs somewhere about this book was back even like two gen I mean, generation or two ago almost all the seafood that everyone was eating was essentially wild caught seafood whereas nowadays the number has drastically changed so it's about 50 50 between like farm raised and um kind of wild caught seafood so yeah i'm just definitely interested in uh learning more about sort of the global seafood industry i suppose um and just yeah filling in some gaps some of my knowledge about that so there's four fish uh next up another science issue book is lost antarctica by james mcclintock he wrote one of my favorite books last year um a natural scopes fishing uh he is a marine polar uh scientist uh, pretty world renowned in that aspect where he basically goes to Antarctica and learns about the ecology and just sort of the environment and the nature of uh, the flora and fauna and the ecosystem of Antarctica, which is really cool. Um, he de uh, This book, I think, is going to deal a lot with sort of the day-to-day, -day, how you go about living in Antarctica and actually conducting research, stuff like that. I just find it really fun. He mixes conservationism, uh, science, ecology, and like kind of his own personal, like, funny uh humorous vignettes and stuff in his writing style so yeah it's just too bad he only has that other book i just mentioned and this one hopefully comes out with another one soon i meant i started this book last year for like another readathon i think i read the first couple chapters but i didn't end up finishing it i'm definitely going to try and finish it this month for this readathon all right up next is the infernal battalion by django wexler and this is the fifth and final book in the shadow campaign series uh, it's probably my favorite flintlock fantasy, and if you guys have been following the channel, you know flintlock fantasy is like my favorite subgenre of fantasy. I um, just find it really, really interesting. Um, the magic system, if you could even like call that, is basically like demon possession and that sort of, I guess, concept. Um, definitely is very important and integral to the plot of the story, but it's not in your face all the time and just so over the top that it kind of just takes over all the other elements of the story. Uh, I just find it really interesting. Uh, the plot, except for the second book, is done really, really well, I think. And some of the characters are some of the best characters um, I've, I've read in fantasy. Uh, most notably, Winter Eringlass is probably the best female character um, that I've read about since I started reading fantasy last year. So yeah, this is the fifth and final book. I'll be glad to well, kind of sad to finish the series, but kind of glad in the sense I've only finished like three series, I think, since I started reading fantasy. Um, but yeah, it'll be good to actually finish one, plus the cover on this one, that kind of like red and black theme is just really sick. 
All right, and then lastly um, is the group book, which I don't own, but I'll either like borrow it from the library or get an audiobook of it or something. It's N.K. Jemisin's 100,000 Kingdoms. And to be honest, I don't know anything about this one. Um, I'm more familiar with her, um, uh, the second series, which is, uh, oh yeah, of course I say that, and then I'm like completely drawing a blank. But the fifth season, that series... Um, I've heard and read more reviews about that than The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is the first book in her first trilogy. So yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm uh, getting into, but definitely be reading that for the group book and uh, checking out a new fantasy author that's obviously new to me. So there you guys have it. Those are the five books for the Mythathon. Now let's get on to just some just kind of randomish books that I want to read in the month of August. Um, I've totally been neglecting my very short introduction series like really bad. I don't even know the last one I read. It's probably been like five months or something. But I'm gonna go with the Habsburg Empire. A very short introduction by Martin Randy, or Rady. Martin Randy. <laughs> uh, anyways, the Habsburgs pretty much owned like half the like world at like a certain like, you know, certain points in like the 1700s. Uh, just a very prominent sort of European dynasty that just has ties like from like the late Middle Ages down to literally like uh, the 18 and early 1900s and stuff uh during before like the uh fall and like world war one and stuff but yeah it's just a really crazy like i know some of the some uh vignettes and stuff from the Habsburg empire for, especially in the early around uh like i said when it's first kind of forming in the late middle ages since i studied late middle ages more than sort of the time period that most of the stuff in this book is or the Habsburg like when they're at their zenith you know the 16 17 1800s I really haven't studied that hardly at all so I'm hoping this will fill in sort of a lot of the blank spaces uh for me and I know I'll quite a bit more like towards the end in the fall in the last like generation or so and the lead up um to World War One, and then kind of the fall of like the Austro-Hungarian Empire and everything in World War One. uh so yeah like I said I'm hoping this kind of just fills in all the <laughs> the blank and empty shadowy places in my mind about the Habsburg Empire uh, but yeah, just excited to just get a nice little primer on that. Uh, all right, and then for if you've been following the channel, you've know I got really into like horse the horse heresy Warhammer stuff, um, and I'm gonna go with the next book in the series, which is book four. Even though I read like fifty three in fifty four or no fifty three in like fifty five technically, but you don't really have to read it in that great of an order, I guess, because you kind of just sort of know everything anyways. Like if you like read some of the lore and stuff but anyways i'm going james swallows the flight of the eisenstein i'm really hoping i like this one because uh one of the main characters in this one is going to be garrow which was book 42 and that was the first horse heresy book that i uh ever read and that's kind of what drew me into the series because i you know i went into it with a pretty bad expectation just based on like a stereotype and everything and i was pleasantly surprised when it turned out really good but like i said that character from book 42 is going to be a central uh character in the flight of the eisenstein so yeah definitely looking forward to this one all right then we got what do we got what do we got we got two more three more all right let me talk about the net galley book that i want to read and it's um i've been trying to catch up sort of on my net galley books but like last month it kind of fell behind except for like one uh but anyways this one is going to be no one man should have all that power by amos amos Bashad, i believe and i thought this one was just really pertinent <laughs> to like the political events kind of going on uh in the world today and what this book i think is about is sort of the like the people who pull the puppet masters who pull the strings like kind of like in world politics and in the media and with like celebrities and pretty much anything where there's, you know, big money or big publicity or, you know, anything like that sort of involved, like, who's actually, you know, sort of running the show and making the calls and making the shots kind of behind the scenes that people don't uh, really know about. So, yeah, I thought it just sounds like a really interesting uh, type of book, which is why I requested it on Night Galley. So hopefully I get to that one um, on my Kindle and enjoy it. And I'll guys tell you about that after I finish that one. Uh, let's see, I have an arc uh, that I need to read that sounds really good, and it's uh, S.C. Gwynn's Hymns of the Republic, the story of the final year of the American Civil War. Um, and one of his other uh, books was shortlisted for the Pulitzer Prize, which uh, I thought was really cool. And I remember making a statement at the beginning of the year where I needed to branch out in my history and stuff. So this definitely is branching out because I don't think I own a single Civil War book, even though I have, let's see pretty much like what 
I have about probably a dozen shelf, dozen of these type of shelves full of history books, and I don't think I own a single uh, Civil War book. So that's kind of you know good and bad, I guess. But like I said, I want to kind of branch out and study a couple more different subjects and genres and or subgenres, I guess, of history. And this is definitely a new topic for me. I've studied the Civil War a little bit, so I mean, I have a pretty good grasp of like the basics and stuff uh but from what i understand this book um being about the last year his sort of slant on it is that almost pretty much everyone doing stuff really either they didn't have their heart into it or they basically sucked at what they were doing uh just from like, some of the blurbs i read and uh some of the uh other uh like advanced reviews that i sort of read before accepting it uh basically you know grant was a terrible general sherman was probably the most important person during that last year of the war but you know he was pretty much uh, a punk uh lee was sort of just like moping around he wasn't like the demigod that you know he's like cracked up to be and like i said grant wasn't like you know this like superhuman hero of the north like that come you know strikes like a thunderbolt out of nowhere pretty much everyone was just messing up and failing and you know everyone's just exhausted and all that stuff and then a bunch of other vignettes are also touched upon it's not just like a military narrative um i've read the first two chapters so far but um a bunch of other things are going to be talked about, uh, such as uh, Andersonville, uh, like Clara Barton, stuff like that. So it's not just, like I said, not just like kind of a blow by blow military narrative, which are definitely not are not books that I really enjoy reading uh, very often. So yeah, like I said, it's definitely a poli uh, not political. It's definitely a popular history because the author uses a lot of like kind of uh, com no not comment. What am I looking thinking of? Like colloquialisms, I guess. Uh, you know, like modern phrases and uh, things like sayings in terms of phrases and stuff uh, that you don't really see, like, you know, academic history and stuff. But the writing so far has been really clear, straightforward, very easy to read and stuff, which is always a good thing when you're getting into a new subject. So hopefully I get to finish Hymns of the Republic. And lastly, kind of going on the theme of picking up and reading diff books on different topics or subgenres that I'm not super familiar with. It's a book I recently picked up and it's The House of Medici, It's Rise and Fall by Christopher Hibbert. And this is obviously all about uh, basically, the, you know, the family of uh, the Medicis, which I don't really know anything about because usually my history studies always basically just cut off during the Renaissance period. And this would obviously be sort of the time period where the Medici family in uh, Italy really like kind of exploded and took off. Don't really know anything about them, to be honest, except, you know, they pretty much dominated Florence in sort of the 14 and 1500s. And that's basically about it. So that's why I'm hoping I can get through this book and just, you know, learn more about that time. Learn more about the Renaissance in general, but obviously in particular about um, uh, the House of Medici. So yeah, that's why I picked uh, this book. So there you guys have it. Those are the 10 books I'm hoping to uh, blast through in the month of August. Um, I got high hopes. Oh, actually, I got one more. I got one more. Uh, it's actually one of the great courses. I think I'm trying to, I'm getting back on, not back on schedule, back kind of in the routine of listening to one a month. I, th I don't think I listened to one last month during the junkie trials, but hopefully I can get back on track this month. And I'm going with the Celtic World by Jennifer Paxton. Um, I really enjoy learning about the Celts, um, especially since that's sort of like, like the premier classical history, like kind of during like Greco-Roman times. Uh, but this book or this course is dealing with sort of, you know, myth busting all the kind of silly stuff that Celtic, you know, myth and lore has sort of taken on like over the past uh, couple centuries, especially like during like the Victorian era and stuff. Um, and dealing a lot with like kind of linguistics and the archaeological excavations, things like that, that have uh, really uh, reshaped our understanding of the Celts. Um, uh, just, you know, even over the last like generation or so. So that's why I'm going with the Celtic world, just because I really enjoy learning about the Celts. So this is definitely not branching into something new, but uh, like I said, hopefully learn a little bit about the new research coming in and just having a better understanding of, uh, you know, the Celtic world. So that's why I'm going with that great course. So tell me what you guys think about any of these books. If you've read any of these authors, anything like that, leave some comments down below. Uh, give me your com or leave a comment about your favorite book that you're planning on reading uh, in the month of August down here. Um, and yeah, just if you want to subscribe to the, wow, that was a terrible transition. I can't believe I just did this entire video 
without like having anything to splice and everything and then I totally just screw it up here at the end uh <laughs> but anyways if you want to like support the channel and everything just you know comment like subscribe all that stuff and I do have an Etsy shop uh, if you want some cool bookmarks uh definitely go check that out probably gonna start plugging that a little bit more since I want to you know <laughs> obviously grow the Etsy business and stuff, but yeah, encourage you guys to check that out, um, if you don't mind, you know, getting some cool mahogany and cherry bookmarks, encourage you guys to go over there, and always remember, whatever you're reading, read victoriously.